signs is everywhere. It can even be found in your kitchen or anywhere else. Mayung adlaw sa inyong tanan. In this video, we are gonna conduct an experiment using baking soda and vinegar. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you the science behind this experiment and other related topics. Also, these are the materials that we will use for this experiment. And without further ado, let's proceed to the experiment. Measure 50 grams of baking soda using the weighing scale. Place the measured baking soda inside the balloon using a funnel and set aside. Measure 50 ml of vinegar inside the glass and make sure to clean the glass before using. Attach the balloon at the opening of the bottle, put the part of the balloon down so that it will not mix with the vinegar yet. Make sure to remove air from the balloon before attaching it to the opening of the bottle. Light the candle and position them at the front of the table. Mix the baking soda and vinegar by flipping the balloon. Gently swirl the bottle to allow the reaction to fully take place. You need to hold the face and hold the opening. When the balloon is not expanding anymore, hold the opening of the balloon and remove it from the bottle. Bring the balloon close to the candle and position it as if pouring something into the candle. Don't position it directly above the flame. Based on the experiment, 
a chemical reaction took place. But how do we know that there is a chemical reaction? Evidences of chemical reaction includes evolution of gas bubble, which is evident in the reaction or in the experiment. As we can see, there is an expansion of the balloon as the reaction took place. And we can see that there is really bubbles forming at the bottom of the solution. Baking soda, or also called as sodium bicarbonate, is being mixed with vinegar which contains acetic acid. Now, mixing those will produce new substance and a gas. To understand the reaction, we need something to represent what's happening in the experiment. This is where we use chemical equations. For this reaction, this will be the balanced chemical equation. Which basically means that adding baking soda or sodium bicarbonate plus acetic acid or the vinegar will yield or will produce sodium acetate, water, and carbon dioxide. Now for the most interesting part, how did we extinguish the fire in the candle? A fire burns because of three elements, heat, fuel, and oxygen. This is also called the fire triangle. Carbon dioxide is more dense than oxygen gas. That is why when we pour the contents or this carbon dioxide into this candle, it tends to replace the existing oxygen gas inside this candle. So, it means that the fire triangle is being destroyed because we are now eliminating oxygen, which is one of the fuel or the parts of the fire triangle. I know that's already amazing, right? But to make it even more amazing, how about if we can compute the amount of carbon dioxide that we were able to produce. First, we need to know which of the two, sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid, stopped the reaction. Then, how much of it produced carbon dioxide? So we have 50 grams of sodium bicarbonate and we need to calculate the number of moles using its molar mass which gives us 0.60 mole of sodium bicarbonate. Same for the acetic acid, we have 50 ml, convert it to grams, then convert it to moles using its smaller mass, thus giving us 0.83 moles of acetic acid. Based on the balanced chemical equation, both baking soda or sodium bicarbonate and vinegar or acetic acid has a stoichiometric ratio to carbon dioxide with 1 is to 1 which means that 0.60 moles of sodium bicarbonate produces 0.60 moles of carbon dioxide and 0.83 moles of acetic acid produces 0.83 moles of carbon dioxide. Since sodium bicarbonate is the first one to run out during the experiment, it means that it is the one responsible for stopping the chemical reaction. Thus, it is called the limiting reactant. Now since we know the amount of moles we were able to produce during the reaction in this experiment, we can now convert it back to grams using its molar mass as our conversion factor. Therefore, in this experiment, in this reaction, we were able to produce 26 grams of carbon dioxide. If you're interested about this experiment, I am including or I am attaching a procedure below and also my calculations for this experiment. Thank you for watching. Adios. Ciao, ciao, ciao.